Hi everybody, thank you for joining me at Sharing Wellness Promoting Health. For the next eight Wednesdays, I'm going to be going through the Healthy Habits Challenge. I'm working on an online program. I did uh, actually author a Healthy Habits Lifestyle Guide a couple years ago on my journey back to health from RSD. So before I start, <clears throat> I want to talk a little bit about me. So in 1994, I was diagnosed with RSD, CRPS, which is a chronic pain neuroinflammatory syndrome. There's a lot of components to it. They're not really sure how it happened or how to fix it. Uh, but in 1994, I was crawling. It took me a long time to walk. Then I found Soki and Natural Health, and now I'm kind of jogging and running again. At some point during this um, process of my journey back to health, um, I kind of realized that everything, that there were a lot of things that I was doing that I could do better um, that were impacting my health. So when I sat there and looked at my life and the habits that I had and the eating that I had and the water and the exercise habits and the stress, all those things were contributing to more inflammation, more pain, and more fatigue in my overall health. So I decided when I found the Soki products, the Chi, the Hot House, the ERE, the ePower, and I started using them, there were other things that I could actually do to participate in my own health to make it better. So I went on an exploration and educational journey where I received um, tons of certifications. Um, I'm a certified aromatherapist, herbalist. I am a natural health professional. Last year I got board certified as a holistic health practitioner. I just finished a course with Dr. Tana on functional nutrition for chronic pain and acceptance and commitment therapy. So my focus, especially with uh, COVID-19, is um, I'm getting older and I really want to share this information with as many people as I can because it was instrumental to my health and making me feel better and I know it's going to help you feel better. So my goal is just to help others improve the quality of their life by sharing my story and what I've learned on using essential oils, plants, foods, and other natural substances to promote well-being, improve our health, promote healing, and prevent illness. So when we take a look at wellness, what is it? Wellness is a quality or state of being healthy in our body and our mind, especially as the result of deliberate effort. It's an approach to health care that emphasizes preventing illness and prolonging life, as opposed to emphasizing on treating disease. The only way to achieve wellness is to keep working at it continually throughout your life and developing healthy lifestyle habits, focusing on managing your stress, your gut health, and several other things. It starts with a strong foundation. So a chair has four legs, a stool has three legs. So when I looked at my journey, I kind of broke it down into habits for daily living, which would be um, what we drink, what we eat, if we participate in exercise, how clean our environment is, how clean our air is. I focus on our gut health, um, the microbiome in our gut, which is related to all our health, our digestion, our elimination, managing our emotions, our stress, our anger, our fear, our sadness, how those emotions affect our sleep and how our sleep affects our health. And uh, the role prayer and faith and a support, a strong support group has in our health. So the lifestyle guide that I wrote discussed um, eight major sections, which was clean water, eating good food, moving your body, gut health, digestion, and elimination, supporting your weakest length, when should you add supplements, and if you do, what supplements may work or may help, limit your exposure to toxins, balance your emotions, and faith, hope, and prayer. I'm taking all this information and I'm going to be doing eight weekly segments on it that are going to be brief and then I'm working on an online wellness program at your own pace with support from me through uh, group coaching calls, uh, much more in-depth on each topic obviously and um, to help you on your journey. So creating a new habit, the best way to make that new habit stick is to do it consistently. Just keep doing it. If you forget to do it one day, don't say, oh, I forgot, it doesn't matter. Just start doing it as soon as you remember. Because the, heart, the bigger the habit, the longer it takes to change it. If you're trying to quit smoking, that's not going to go away in 30 days. I mean, if you make it the first 30 days, 
uh, yay raw because I've quit smoking and sometimes it takes more than one attempt so you just have to keep doing it. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about water. So when we look at water, I just finished watching a PBS special on water, the foundation and the basis of all life, which is really true. I don't think it's a coincidence that three quarters of the earth's surface and 70 to 75 percent of our body is water. We don't really think about water unless we're really super thirsty. And it's one of the most overlooked habits and one of the most beneficial habits um, you can have. In fact, if you look at history, the development of civilizations, civilizations have followed the path of water. If we don't have water, we can't grow plants, we don't have anything to eat, we don't have good soil, and it just continues. There's no speed, there's no bugs, it just keeps going on and on and on and on up the food chain. So our bodies need water because all our cells, all our organs, all our tissues use water. Water regulates our body temperature and it helps our body do its bodily functions. It protects our tissues, our spinal cords, our joints. It helps our body remove wastes and assists in digestion. It helps us from becoming dehydrated and it also reduces inflammation in the body and if you reduce inflammation you're probably not going to be as tired and you're probably going to have a little bit less pain. So many of us have trouble with constipation, fogginess and confusion, lower high blood pressure depending on the volume of salts in our body, muscle weakness, trouble losing weight, dry skin, fatigue, dizziness, headaches. Those are all symptoms of hydration. I mean you can have those symptoms they may also not be from dehydration, but they can be from dehydration. The other thing we need to look at in about water is how healthy is it. So if you're not using a water filter, I strongly suggest that you use one. If what happened in Michigan with the lead in the water wasn't enough, and you've never taken a look at the national primary drinking water regulations or checked out the little water report you get in your annual water bill, you may want to look those things up and you may want to look into at least filtering your shower water and definitely your drinking water. There's a lot of people that get skin rashes and itchy skin and dry skin and lose their hair because of the chemicals in the water because they're sensitive to it from the shower. I've seen a lot of remarkable things by introducing a lot of my clients and family members to showers in the water. The EPA primary drinking water regulation and the reports that you get in the mail um, may, you know, a lot of them contain disinfectants, disinfectant byproducts, inorganic chemicals, organic chemicals, microorganisms, radionuclides, chloramines, which are eye, nose irritants, uh, chlorine, chlorine dioxide. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. So even though they're at safe levels, Okay, what's, you know, if you can avoid them, I mean, why not avoid them? Okay, we've all been, many of us who drank tap water our whole life are, you know, still healthy, but why continue when now you know about them? There's been a lot of individual studies on chlorine and chlorine in the water and its relationship to some chronic diseases that a meta-analysis was done, which takes a look at all those studies and compiles the data. And <clears throat> there is enough information to assume that maybe uh, chlorine in the water isn't so good to our health. The other question I get a lot is what type of water should I drink? Well, definitely not tap water or bottled water because bottled water has no regulation, neither does well water. So if we know that there's certain levels of all these chemicals and things in our water that's allowed, and they're not testing bottled water, and they're not testing well water, what's really in them, which is even scarier. So, get a filtered water. So do you want a carbon filter? Do you want reverse osmosis? Do you want to drink distilled water? Do you want to use a Brita water pitcher to remove some of the contaminants, or a filtration water pitcher for your drinking water? You decide, just use some type of Filtration. I, in my home, use uh, reverse osmosis ion exchange with carbon, um, and I'm happy with that. So the next area on water is how much should we drink? Well, you know, they say six to eight glasses a day or half your body weight in ounces per day. 
Um, here's the thing. Um, green drinks, juices, uh, like vegetable juices and stuff, herbal teas, liquids from soups, or fruits and veggies that are really have high water contents like watermelon or cabbage and those kind of things, that counts towards your water. So if you're not drinking water, you may want to start adding in some maybe green tea um, and herbal tea, and we know we don't want to put tons of sugar in the tea. Um, some juices, some green drinks, um, those kind of nutrient-dense drinks. If you eat a lot of soups, you're getting um, fluid that way as well. So when I look at life, I kind of look that um, life uses a multi-energy approach. The air that we breathe gives us oxygen, and the air gets its oxygen, a lot of it from the plants who take in the carbon dioxide and give us the, some more oxygen. The sun gives us heat and light, which the plants need to grow, and we need them to grow because they absorb the light through their skin. We absorb the sunlight through our skin. It keeps us warm. It gives us vitamin D. Um, it's very healing. The earth grows food and is home to large bodies of water that we need. Um, which works in with our digestion. And the dark um, puts everything to kind of sleep so our body can rest, the plants can rest, and everything can kind of regenerate during the night. So energy is what we're made of. We're all um, compilations of billions of cells made up of billions of atoms, and atoms really by themselves don't have any physical structure. They're kind of like vortexes of wind or vibrating material. So that's what each of us are, a combination of billions of cells and um, tissues creating um, an organism of a plant, an animal, a human. Uh, so that's what this is about. So when you think about your body and you're sick, and then you say, hey, you know, my body's going to make billions of cells each and every day that are brand new. If I want to make healthier cells, if I want to make better cells, if I want to replace the bad cells with the good cells, if our body even really does that, which I think that it does, um, you need to have a stable foundation and you need to rebuild your health and you might as well build them healthy cells starting with water. So if you're not drinking a lot of water, start adding in some herbal teas, some green drinks, start swapping out your sodas and your second and third and fourth cups of coffee with water and see how you um, feel. In the beginning when you drink more water, you're probably going to go to the bathroom a little more, but your body's going to rebalance itself with the, um, a fluid rate. So it will actually rebalance um, and not let it go. It'll start using it because it'll know that it's going to be replenished and it's not going to be starving. Kind of like food, you know, when you change your eating habits, you're hungry at different times and then that eventually goes away. So I always use Aquasana water products. I love them. That's what I use in my home. I've been using those for almost 30 years. Um, they offer drinking water filters, shower filters, and that kind of stuff. So I hope you join me during these things. Next week we're going to talk about food and how it interacts with our body to stay healthy. So thanks and have a great week.